guys, it's Robin, R.S. Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you whatever I've worked on in the craft room this week. I'm going to show you a couple quick knitting projects, and then we'll get into the fun sewing stuff. I did finish my dishcloth, the one that I'd started last week. As you can see, I haven't blocked it yet, where it started in the purple corner, and I kind of wanted to see how it would end up looking compared to the week before's which I still have not blocked yet. But it seems like it doesn't matter which ones are in the corner that the centers are basically all gonna look the same. It's just gonna slide it down a little bit. So instead of being right here where the purple was above, where the purple was down here below the center, now it's up here. But look, if you turn it around, it's down below the center too. So yeah, they all looked basically the same no matter where it was. I kind of thought maybe it would change it a little bit depending on how much of each color was in the corner, but they still look the same. I tend to block these either in bulk or when I'm working on a sewing project that I already have the iron all heated up and ready for, but then I've just been getting so involved in the sewing projects that these just sit over in the corner and they never get blocked. But it's okay, I will get them blocked. I did start a new one for the week. I've switched back over to what is this called? Coral Seas Ombre. This is the sugar and cream. This is one of the ones that was sent to me, the fun kind of basically Florida sea oceany colors. So this has been going along nicely. I mentioned last week that I was going to, after I made my video on last Labor Day, that I was just gonna spend the rest of the day knitting on this shawl, the, the summertime rain shawl or whatever it's called but as soon as i turned the camera off and i had some lunch and then i got to thinking and i had this chore to do and i had that to do and other things so i didn't actually get sit down and knit until after three o'clock anyways but last week was one of those weeks that i'd kind of overdone it a few times so my my neck with all the pain and stuff was giving me a bit of a grief so i did spend a lot of afternoons i think three or four of them just sitting down and knitting anyways so i did get some time onto this shawl it is the Summer Rain Shawl by Leah Thibault. It's the one with all the fun little raindrop eyelets. Now this is supposed to be 66 inches wide, so I'm already kind of at that point. Yeah, because I'm starting at one spot and going up, so I'm already at the widest part of 66 inches. So I have to knit it 31 inches high, give or take, because it always depends on your yarn and your gauge and stuff like that. So let's see how much we actually got done this week. Now it's actually able to start hanging. And I know I've mentioned it before that when you first start knitting something, you only have about this much on it. It's a little bit hard to knit, but once you start getting some weight on it and there's more of the item hanging below your needles, it seems to go so much quicker. Like it's easier to hold on to everything and get the stitches to slide. I, I've heard a few other knitters say the same thing, so I know it's not just me. So this is where I was last week. So I put several rows on it. I've actually, it comes in sections. I think it's like three or four sections. So I've already done the first section and I repeated it one more time like they said, and now I'm into the second section. So I'm cruising right along. And let's see if we can see what this looks like. Hold it up and let some of the light shine through and we can see the raindrops. This has not been blocked yet. So once you take any type of a lace pattern, and you give a little bit of a bath and the yarn relaxes and then you stretch it out on a blocking mat, all of those lace stitches will open up nicely and you'll see the raindrops coming down. And then this is what it looks like from the wrong side. It's one of those things where you can wear this shawl either way. It does have a right and wrong side, but it's not like it's a good side and a bad side. You can go either way. I even stopped at the end of a row for you guys, so that worked out really good. It's a bit of a ruffly mess right now, but it does have a nice bit of a weight to go to it, and it just seems to go a little bit faster now. This is about, so let's say about three inches long, so that means what, I've only got 28 more inches to knit? 
I do it pretty good. I am partly through one ball, one skein, however you want to look at it. And then I have the second one to go. Each row gets shorter and shorter by a couple stitches. So I'm pretty confident that there's going to be enough yarn to make this. I finally got around to finishing the log cabin mitts this week. I don't know, I just couldn't wrap my head around the final bit of directions. Basically, all it was was a three needle bind off here. Leave this open. You picked up all these stitches and you knit the thumb flat and then you seamed up the top. Not a big deal at all. These turned out really nice. It's nice to finally have these off the needles and to move on to the next project. Okay, let's get into the sewing. Now I know I'm pretty sure I showed you these blocks last week and maybe they weren't stitched together. This was Friday's sewing project. So I have these stitched together. While I'm not a fan of having my seams pressed open when you have black as your back like that, I do like how colorful it pops through like that. Just as a reminder, here's the little one. I have not made any more of these, but I did make several more of the large ones to make that one piece bigger. I'm thinking it could be a nice a wall hanging. If I make it a little bit bigger, it could become a, a couch quilt type thing. I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to stop. I have plenty of black fabric, so if I want to keep going with the 10 inch squares, I will be okay. I did make a little Susie sack. Since I do not have the hardware, I just went with a simple handle. A lot of great ideas of why you would want the clip. Um, I thought this bag would be a little bit big, but if people think that they'd like to clip it to their backpack or another large bag or tote bag, it's really kind of nice. I think you definitely could clip it to your pants buckle if you're, let's say you're going to somewhere quick or, or you're like, maybe you're at like a quilt show and you just want to keep your phone and your wallet and your ID or something in it, but you want to be hands-free if you're at a fair or something, you want to just clip it to your belt instead of having like a fanny pack. How rude. Somebody called me some random robot caller person called me while I was trying to record my video. So yes, you could just clip this on instead of using maybe a fanny pack. It's not very big. This first one I made ended up to be about four inches wide and about six inches tall. I think the pattern calls for it to be four and a half by six and a half or seven or something, but it all depends on how you trim up your fabric and how everything sews. So I have my fun little pumpkins. I've got the boxed bottom like that. It's covered up. This is a raw edge up here, so you use your binding to cover that up. It seems to be the latest fad to do when making bags now. You zip it open, and it's got the harvest moon with the little kitty cat inside of it. I think that worked out really good. I did cut this specifically to have that. I fussy cut it to have it in there, but I didn't really realize that when you opened it up that it would be right there like that. So that, came, that turned out really good. See that little cute cat in there? So I will be making more of these and I will have to take a trip out to Joann's or Michael's or something to pick up some hardware to test those out. These handles are definitely large enough. I wear a size medium glove. This handle, the opening is from here to here is about five and a quarter, five and a half inches. So it opens up nice to carry it like that. I think if this was made larger, it would make a nice on the go one ski knitting project. If you want to put just one ball of yarn and a sock project in there, or maybe a hat project, depending on how big you make the bag, it could be different things. So I thought that's pretty nice. But as it is, you can use it as a notion pouch. The gusset's about two and a quarter, two and a half inches. So you can fit a decent amount of stuff in there. You could put some snacks in there to take them on a little hike or on a car ride. A lot of things depending on what you want to do with these and they fold up nicely. So once I sat down and I read the directions out loud to myself, it actually got a little bit easier. I just followed it line to line to see how it goes and it worked out pretty good. So yeah, definitely gonna make some more of these. 
And with this one, since there's no actual measurements, I might be able to go ahead and get a video for you guys. Let me make a couple more first to make sure I do completely understand it before I start making it. Or maybe we can just do one together and I'll just figure things out as I go like I did on a couple videos. Those were kind of fun, weren't they? And since I'm on a bag kick, I also made some salvage bags. I will put a link up down below in the description box to the pattern to the blog post that I found this on. I did change things up just a little bit, mostly based on size, based on my zipper and everything like that. I have a blue paisley-like fabric on the inside and I used that for both of these. I put my little swirly fabric that I like down here because I was thinking that the blue with the zipper and then you know with the purple with the zipper that they went okay together. Now these were really fun and I will definitely be making more of these. Now the dangerous part about making these is, is you can only make as many as you have the selvage for. Now you're sewing these on a diagonal so there is a long part here. So you need to have a long piece of selvage unless you wanna have some that you just stitch together. But otherwise, the rest of them down here are definitely shorter ones. I do have a mixture of longer selvages and shorter selvages. But I think if you're cutting them off maybe a fat quarter or something, that that would work out really well for here. I have a couple other ideas for this style bag. So I think we will definitely be making one of these in the near future. And that's it for the projects this week. I spent a lot of time working on that shawl. It's funny that I only got about this much done, but because it had so many stitches and it's not it's not a difficult pattern, but you are doing lace and every row is kind of changing and each section you're mirroring one side to the other. Anyone who's done a shawl similar to this, you know that if you do it on this side, whatever you do at the beginning, you kind of flip it or you match it up exactly on the other side. So each row was something active. There was never a uh, pearl back row. You always you were doing lace or something specific on both rows. So you never had that rest row. So it did take up some time. And as I said, it was so long. I still haven't sat down and timed myself. Maybe I'll do that this week to see how long it actually does take to do a row. Because I'd like to get this done soon. So I want to see how many rows I need to do each day and how long it will take me in order to have this done by a certain time limit. I would love to have it done by the end of September. But today is Monday. Well, today's Monday the 9th. So that does give me like three and a half weeks or so. Two, I see one, two, two weeks plus whatever's left of this week. Is it doable? Probably, but then I wouldn't be able to do anything fun like this. So I'm not gonna push myself, but it is nice to have a kind of sort of deadline for yourself to figure out how much you need to do each day to get to you, to hit a certain milestone each week, each month, so that you could see when that project's gonna end. I went up to the post office and I received some really lovely cards this week. Thank you guys so much. I do have some regular cards that I've received that aren't handmade and I love them just as much. But anytime, like I said, when someone does something handmade, I like to put it on the video here just to show you guys on how beautiful these people are, their projects are. And as always, if I've missed someone, I'm really sorry. If I haven't shown your card and it's a handmade one and you think I should have received it already and you're wondering if I did, just let me know. I've just been kind of like sticking these in one spot for now until I can decide exactly what I'm gonna do with them. If I'm gonna put them in a book like I did with my other cards or if I wanna do something special with them. I just haven't decided yet. So if I've missed your card, you think I've missed it or it hasn't arrived yet, just let me know and I'll go ahead and dig through where I, because let's face it, I didn't put them all in the same spot. They're in three different places, but my craft room is small. They're easy to find. So here's some beautiful butterflies because you guys know I love butterflies. And they used the same type of paper and put it onto the card. This one is just on the envelope, and this one has this nice shiny little mirrored silver looking fabric on the back with a little card with that same shiny silver mirrored thing on there. Happiness is a journey, not a destination. And it also has some things on the inside. Distance means nothing when someone means everything. And then more pretty butterflies. I'm always, I'm always a big fan for, you know, I'm a sucker for all these scalloped edges and stuff like that. And I know you can usually do that either with scissors or with a punch, but it just seems to make the card look that much nicer. There you go. Can you see that nice scallopy type edge on the side? Thank you so much. It is beautiful. And yes, I do love the butterflies. 
And I got a couple postcards in there too. Someone went on a little bit of a trip. You know, I have never been inside of a castle. I've watched plenty of videos. I watched the Bakery Bears and Dan always takes us on to trips to different castles that they have over there in England and everything. And it's really kind of neat, but I've never actually been in one. We have a couple castles here in the US, but it's never anywhere that I've been to. So that I think it would be really kind of cool to go over to England or Scotland or anywhere really that has castles and just see the different ones they have. This is really kind of neat because you have like the castle cathedral type place there and then you have all these houses that are really like next to each other that are surrounding it. This is the Durham Cathedral and Norman Castle and they're almost encircled by the river Ware as in W-E-A-R like you wear a jacket. So this is kind of cool. So here's the river, there's your cathedral with all the houses around it. And this one is around Blackpool, so all the different sites you can see. No way, uh-uh. I can't do Ferris wheels. I can't do that type of heights. I don't do well on roller coasters either. I don't mind like the roller coaster and stuff like that. It's just the whole rickety thing. But when you're going on the roller coaster and it goes tick, 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 and you're kind of like leaning back and then it gets to the top and you go like this and it, I swear, it's like, how is that roller coaster going to get from here and go down and stay on the track? Because it's just going to, like, fall off. It's not going to, it's going to, you know, how's it going to stick to the track? And I, I believe it has something to do with magnets and stuff like that. So once you get past the teeter, 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 then I'm okay. Now, I, I got to admit, though, if you're going like this and they make them sharp curves, I'm not a big fan of that either. So I don't do Ferris wheels and I don't do roller coasters. But they're really exciting to watch other people do them. So that's it for me this week, guys. Have you guys created anything fun and exciting? Are you starting to gear up for Christmas gifts yet? Or are you getting ready to decorate for Thanksgiving and Halloween in the fall? I'm starting to look at some of the Halloween and autumn type fabrics and start to play with them a little bit. Yet I still want to play with the salvages on these. You're going to find both of these are going to be listed in my shop. I'm going to be listing them as soon as I finish this video today. And today, as I said, is Monday, September 9th. So they should be in the shop no problem by the time you see this on Wednesday. I haven't decided if I'm going to list this one or not. So if anyone's interested in this one, just let me know and I will pop it into the shop. I haven't decided, as I said, if it's going to go in the shop or if it's something I'm going to give away. I'm going to work on more of these this week, and I'm going to go ahead and look at some Halloween applique patterns. I think I want to make another small wall hanging now. It's, it's really kind of fun just to make little small wall hangings to decorate, to decorate during the holidays. I'm only one person, and it's still hot here in Florida. We had three days of heat advisory over the weekend, and today... It's still, it's going to be into triple digits with the heat index. When I woke up this morning, I'd say I got up at like 5.30. By 6 o'clock, it was, it was 74 degrees, but with the heat index, it already felt like it was over 84. I think it was like 86 or 87, and we're definitely going to go up to about 104 this afternoon. So... I, I don't need all those quilts just one or two quilts just something to cuddle up with on the couch and something to sleep with in bed is great but I still want to make quilts for the holidays so I make wall hangings wall hangings placemats mug rugs all of those things are fun to make for the holidays so thanks for hanging out with me let me know down in the comments what you're working on or at least what you might want to work on because sometimes we just get too busy and we don't have time to work on something but we're working through it in our head and dreaming about it Hey guys, until next time, I'll see you later. Have fun and don't forget to create with Scraptitude. Bye!